Okay, hello. This uh, video lesson is going to be on standard enthalpies of formation, and this is the notation that we use for standard enthalpies of formation. Um, this is the final method for determining changes in enthalpy for chemical reactions. So we looked at calorimetry, we looked at bond energies, we looked at Hess's law, and now we're looking at standard enthalpies of formation. All right, so standard enthalpies of formation, essentially what this is, is going to be looking at how much energy, how much enthalpy is needed to form a substance from its elements at what are known as standard conditions, okay, or standard states. So our change in enthalpy is the f f formation is to form one mole of a compound directly from its constituent elements. Constituent just means the elements that make it up. So its constituent elements would be for like carbon dioxide would be carbon and oxygen. And in their standard states. Now we need this idea of standard states because we have to standardize our, our temperatures and our pressures. Uh, because what we're going to have are different states of matter if we change the temperature and if we change the pressure. So if we have a um, water, is are we talking about water at a liquid or are we talking about water as a gas? So when we change the temperature, we change the states of matter. And if we change the pressure, we can also have an effect on the states of matter. And if you remember, back when we talked about um, changes or thermochemical equations, that change in enthalpy is dependent on the states of matter because if there's more, if you have a gas, then you have more energy in your system, so more enthalpy, so therefore you have uh, less energy that's released. So we, we standardize everything so that we talk about everything in their same states, okay? Meaning that they're in, what is their temp or what state of matter are they at 1 atm and 25 degrees Celsius, okay? So that's what we're looking at when we talk about um, standard and standard states, okay? Now, if elements exist in more than one state at standard conditions, we're going to use the more stable state. Okay, so for example, carbon has two different solid forms. We can have solid carbon um, as diamond, and we can have solid carbon as uh, put another solid here as graphite. So there's two different forms of the solid form of carbon. So which one do we use? Do we use the more stable version? And believe it or not, the more stable version is actually graphite. I know you probably thought that it was going to be diamond. But you're wrong. We'll talk more about that when we get into thermodynamics. We'll talk about why that is a more standard, more stable state. Uh, this isn't too important as stuff that you're going to see. Um, you're going to have a table that will help you figure out which one is more stable. Okay, It's going to be based on what we're going to look at in the next slide here. So let's take a look. All right, so this is a reaction written in its formation. So we have this, eth uh, this would be uh, ethyl alcohol. Okay, so we've got two carbons, five or six hydrogens, and one oxygen. So we are going to form this compound from the elements that make it up. What elements make it up it would be carbon, it would be hydrogen, and it would be oxygen. And these are the states that they exist in. The idea here is that we're looking at creating this compound from the elements that are formed that, that 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 compose it. But the elements are going to be set at zero. So it's kind of like the elements are set as the building blocks for all of our compounds, and we're going to establish them as zero. Okay? So anything, any of the, the most stable form of any element is going to be zero for its change in enthalpy. All right, because it's already formed. We don't have to form it. We don't need any energy to form something that's already formed. So our elements are kind of like the baseline. So this enthalpy change, this this value here, this change in enthalpy with a little f underneath of it. Underneath it means that we are forming this from its elements. So a lot of times you're not going to see this reaction because we, you could write that if you needed to. We're always going to make this one mole. So this over here is always going to be one mole for the reaction because by definition, this is the change in enthalpy to create one mole of substance from its elements. That's why we have the one half in here. We put the one half in here to make this come out to be one mole because the table that you're going to be looking at is going to look a lot like this. This is the chart that we have. We have our changes in enthalpy right here. Okay, changes in enthalpy of formation. And these are the other two thermodynamic functions we're going to get to a little bit later, um, which is free energy and entropy. Okay, for the first one though, we're looking at the change in enthalpy of formation. And notice they just put the substance in here. So if I wanted to, I would write that reaction out. That would be barium solid reacting with sulfur solid, and that would be sulfur eight, I believe. And you would put in here oxygen. And it would be a gas, and it would make barium sulfate, and that would be in the solid form. 
Okay, so that would be the reaction. All I have to do, and then I can go back and balance this if I needed to. I'm not going to do that, but you can balance the equation. When you do, you need to make this one mole because this is the energy for making one mole of any of these compounds. Now, to check if that S8 was, well, I don't have it on this chart. I'd have to look it up and see. So if, take a look here. Beryllium, zero. Bromine, zero. Notice we got bromine in a gas, liquid, and aqueous form. Well, the form that we're going to use would be, this would be the elemental state. This would be its most stable version would be the ones that are zero. Cadmium's most stable state would be zero. So if you ever want to know what their stable states are, you look for the ones that have the zeros in them. Those are the most stable. Hydrogen two, remember the diatomic versus hydrogen by itself. The hydrogen two, the diatomic version is more stable. Okay, and then of course we get to the ions, and you can we'll talk more about that later. But for for now, this is what's known as a standard um, thermodynamic thermodynamic function chart or or graph or whatever. I guess it's not really a graph; it doesn't really have dots and stuff on it. But it's just data, so it's just listing the data here. Okay, you're gonna use this quite a bit. I'll give you a copy of this in class. This is from your book; it's from your appendices. So I'm gonna actually give you. Um, that chart so don't worry about copying or worry about where you get it so that's where this number comes from this 277 comes from if we look up uh oh, i think i cut it off but it would be down here if you'd look up that number right there okay it would be one more down if i just missed that one last substance anyway you can look it up in your chart when you get it so that's where this number comes from so we're going to look up and see this is the energy that's released when we form this substance okay this one's zero this is zero and this is zero all right, so what do we do with this?